Hi everyone, it's Professor Pemberton, and in this video we're going to finish up our discussion on the Hopital's rule. So in the previous video we talked about how to use the Hopital's rule to evaluate limits that resulted in an indeterminate form of type 0 divided by 0 or infinity divided by infinity. In this video we're going to finish up our discussion on when and how to use the Hopital's rule to evaluate limits. So let's pick up where we left off. We have to keep in mind that we can only use the Hopital's rule which said that the limit as x approaches c of f of x divided by g of x that resulted in an indeterminate form of type 0 divided by 0 or infinity divided by infinity La Hopital's rule said you can take the derivative of the numerator, which is f prime of x, and you take the derivative of the denominator and get g prime of x, and now find the limit of this ratio of the two derivatives. Limit as x approaches c of f prime of x divided by g prime of x. You can only use La Hopital's rule if you actually get an indeterminate form of type 0 divided by 0, or plus or minus infinity divided by plus or minus infinity. If you use La Hopital's rule to any other type of limit that does not give you an indeterminate form, you'll get incorrect results. Let's look at example three, La Hopital's rule. Check if the following limits are solvable using La Hopital's rule. If applicable, evaluate the limits and round your answers to six decimal places as needed. Number one, the limit as x approaches negative four of log base six of two x plus nine, all divided by three to the negative five x minus 16 power, then subtract 81. So if x approaches negative four, let's see if we actually get an indeterminate form. So you have log base 6 of 2 times negative 4 plus 9 in the numerator, 3 to the negative 5 times negative 4 power, then subtract 16 in the exponent, and then subtract 81. If you simplify both the numerator and denominator, you'll get 0 divided by 0. So you do get an indeterminate form of type 0 divided by 0. You can use the Hopital's rule. So let's go back to the original limit. Limit as x approaches negative 4 of log base 6 of 2x plus 9 all divided by 3 to the negative 5x minus 16 exponent, then subtract 81. Use the Hopital's rule, so take the derivative of the numerator, and then take the derivative of the denominator separately, and then find the limit of that ratio. Limit as x approaches negative 4, the derivative of the numerator would be 1 divided by the argument of the logarithm, 2x plus 9, but since this is log base 6, you have to take natural log of 6 in the denominator, times the derivative of the inside function using the chain rule, so ddx of 2x plus 9 all divided by 3 to the negative 5x minus 16 is an exponential function, so the derivative is itself, so 3 to the negative 5x minus 16, but since this is base 3 exponential function, you have to multiply by natural log of 3, times the derivative of the inside function. The inside function is the exponent of the exponential function, so ddx of negative 5x minus 16. So let's take the derivative of the inside functions from the numerator and denominator. We have the limit as x approaches negative 4 of 1 divided by 2x plus 9 in parentheses times natural log of 6. The derivative of the inside function, derivative of 2x plus 9, is just 2. And now the denominator, you have 3 to the negative 5x minus 16 power times natural log of 3. Now the derivative of the inside function from the denominator would be negative 5. So now if you simplify, you'll have a limit as x versus negative 4. The numerator is just 2, so 2 divided by 2x plus 9 times natural log of 6. So now let's use the same method as we did in the last video. Let's multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. So you'll have 1 divided by 3 to the negative 5x minus 16 exponent times natural log of 3 times negative 5. That will be in the denominator. So now let's try plugging in x equals negative 4. You have 2 divided by 2 times negative 4 plus 9 in parentheses, then times natural log of 6, times 1 divided by, you'll have 3 to the negative 5 times negative 4, then subtract 16 in the exponent, times natural log of 3 times negative 5. If you enter this into a graphing calculator, you have 2 from the numerator divided by parentheses parentheses 2 times negative 4 then plus 9 close the parentheses on the 9 and then multiply by natural log of 6 close parentheses on the natural log and now close parentheses on the denominator times now the next fraction 1 divided by parentheses 3 to the exponent negative 5 times negative 4 then subtract 16 in the exponent get out of the exponent so hit right times natural log of 3 times negative 5. Then close parenthesis on the denominator. So this is going to give you, when you round the six decimal places, negative 0 0.002509. Okay, let's try another problem. Number 2, the limit as x approaches 7 from the right side of 3 times natural log of x minus 7 in the numerator, all divided by x minus 7. So since x is approaching 7 from the right side, let's see what happens whenever x gets really close to 7. You're approaching 3 times natural log of 7 minus 7 in the numerator, and you're approaching 7 minus 7 in the denominator. This gives you 3 times natural log of 0, all divided by 0. 
natural log of zero, we've talked about this in the previous video, the natural log of x function is approaching negative infinity whenever x is getting really close to zero. So whenever the argument is really close to zero, the natural log function is getting really close to negative infinity. So you have three times negative infinity in the numerator, and you have zero in the denominator. So negative infinity divided by zero. That's not an indeterminate form of type zero divided by zero or infinity divided by infinity. So you have to use a different method to find out the value of this limit. Let's try out this method. Notice that you have an x minus seven as the argument of the logarithm and x minus seven occurs in the denominator. Let's use a substitution. Let's let u be x minus seven, what's on the inside of the argument that also matches the denominator. So if u equals x minus seven and x is approaching seven from the right side, then u is approaching seven minus seven or zero from the right side. So we can replace the limit as x approaches seven from the right side of three times natural log of x minus seven, all divided by x minus seven to be in terms of u now. So limit as x approaches seven from the right side of the original function, it's the limit as u approaches zero of three times natural log of u, I have to replace x minus seven with a u, all divided by u. This becomes the limit as u approaches zero from the right side, three times natural log of u is in the numerator, times, let's try the same trick as the last problem, it's multiplied by the reciprocal of the denominator. The reciprocal of the denominator is one over u, so times one divided by u. So the reason why we're doing this is now we have three times natural log of zero, if you replace u with a zero, times one divided by zero. We've already talked about natural log of zero. Natural log of zero is approaching a really large negative number when x is getting close to zero. So this is three times negative infinity. Now, how do you find out what one divided by zero is? Think about the function one divided by x or one divided by u. What happens whenever u is getting really close to zero from the right side, like this limit says? The function one divided by x or one divided by u, whenever u gets really close to zero, is approaching positive infinity. It's approaching a vertical asymptote at the y-axis, but the y values grow to positive infinity whenever u is approaching zero from the right side of the vertical asymptote. So this becomes three times negative infinity times positive infinity. This gives you negative infinity. So the y values are growing arbitrarily more and more negative for this function whenever x is getting really close to seven from the right side. Okay, let's try one more application of the L'Hopital's rule. Number three, the limit as x approaches negative infinity of this function, two times e to the negative x power plus eight in the numerator. The denominator is negative three x squared plus two x minus seven. So again, let's see what happens whenever x is approaching negative infinity. You have two to the e to the opposite of negative infinity, then plus eight, all divided by negative three times negative infinity squared plus two times negative infinity minus seven. If you simplify all the signs, you'll have two times e to the positive infinity plus eight in the numerator. The denominator is negative three times infinity because negative infinity squared is a really large number, positive. Two times negative infinity stays and negative seven stays. So what does y equals e to the x look like? Whenever the exponent, which is the x, is growing arbitrarily large, e to a very large power is also very large. So this is two times infinity or infinity plus eight, which will just give you positive infinity. The denominator is negative three times infinity, that's negative infinity, two times negative infinity, that's a really large negative number, so negative infinity, minus seven. So when you simplify, you'll get negative infinity in the denominator. So this gives you an indeterminate form of type infinity divided by infinity. So you can use the L'Hopital's rule in this case. So let's go back to the original limit, limit as x approaches negative infinity of the original function, two e to the negative x plus eight in the numerator, divided by negative three x squared plus two x minus seven in the denominator. Use the L'Hopital's rule. So remember how this works. You take the derivative of the numerator, you take the derivative of the denominator, and you divide the two different derivatives. So the limit as x approaches negative infinity, the derivative of the numerator, derivative of two e to negative x, that's two e to negative x because it's an exponential function, times the derivative of the exponents because that's the inside function using the chain rule. So d dx of negative x, derivative of eight is zero. Now the derivative of the denominator, derivative of negative three x squared is negative six x, derivative of two x is two, derivative of negative seven is zero. And now we have one more derivative defined, that's the derivative of the inside function, which was the exponent in the numerator. So you have two times e to negative x, derivative of the inside function, derivative of negative x is negative one, and then the denominator becomes negative six x plus two. So if you simplify, you'll have negative two times e to negative x in the numerator, and negative six x plus two in the denominator. So limit as x versus negative infinity of this expression will also give you an indeterminate form of type infinity divided by infinity. 
because the denominator is approaching infinity, because you have negative six times negative infinity, that's infinity, plus two, that's positive infinity. And then the numerator is negative two times e to the opposite of negative infinity. That will be negative two times e to the positive infinity. That will give you negative infinity. So you have another indeterminate form of type infinity divided by infinity. You can use L'Hopital's rule one more time. So using L'Hopital's rule again, limit as x approaches negative infinity, derivative of the numerator. The derivative of negative two e to negative x is itself Again, times the derivative of the inside function, which is the exponent. So d dx of negative x. And then the derivative of the denominator is derivative of negative 6x is negative 6. And the derivative of 2 is 0, so just negative 6. And now taking the derivative of the inside function from the numerator, you'll have limit as x approaches negative infinity, negative 2 e to negative x times negative 1. That will give you positive 2 e to negative x in the numerator and negative 6 in the denominator. So notice now you will not have an indeterminate form because the denominator is just negative 6. You can't get 0 divided by 0, and you won't have infinity divided by infinity. So now let's find out what the limit's value is. 2 divided by negative 6 will reduce to negative 1 third, and then you have e to negative x. So the limit as x approaches negative infinity of negative 1 third e to negative x would be negative 1 third e to the opposite of infinity, which will be negative 1 third times e to the positive infinity. And we've already talked about e to the positive infinity. Whenever the exponent is getting really large, e to that exponent is also getting very large. So this is negative one-third times positive infinity, which will give you negative infinity. So the y values are growing arbitrarily more and more negative for this function whenever x is approaching negative infinity. So this finishes our discussion on the Hopital's rule. If you have any questions about any of the examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while I work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about the summary of curve sketching techniques.